Alright, what's up y'all? It's Liquor Fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, we're going over the top 5 most overrated builds in NBA 2K20. What we're going to do with this list is start from number 1 and go to number 5. So we're starting off with the most overrated build in my opinion, and that would be the Pure Rim Protector at 7.3, max wingspan, max weight. Now, I'm going to explain to you guys, and you see we go with the speed and strength pie chart here. I'm going to explain. This video is me making the builds how a lot of people popularly make them, and you know, is well known of how they're made. And I'm just kind of debunking that and explaining why they're not all that good. Now, this build right here specifically, I am a big advocate of this build at six foot eight. Now, you can't make it a six foot eight center. You got to be six foot nine. So that's why I suggest to go with the small forward. But y'all get the deal. The pure rim or pure red pie chart at six foot eight, I think, is like a really good way to make this build. But again, today's video, we're explaining a lot of these builds when you make them the improper way, like a lot of people like to do. It's not all that good. Now, again, you see 7-3. Like, yo, when y'all see this right here and you see all this red popping up on your screen, does that not <laughs> does that not make you, like, you know, get a little hint of, like, this build isn't really all that good? But anyway, a, a quick little glimpse at all the physicals. 45 speed, 38 excel, 33 vertical, 34 lateral quickness, and on top of that, we still haven't even done the weight yet. And I don't understand this either, but you already have 95 strength and 95 into your D and all that stuff. And you're going to go ahead and see some people still max out the weight and it doesn't really affect much at all. It doesn't even affect your like acceleration or vert because it's already so low. But again, and then they go max wingspan on top of that too. Don't really gain much, but obviously you, you're going to want your wingspan to be pretty big with this. And I would suggest probably go glass takeover on this. But anyway, y'all get the deal. This is my most overrated build, in my opinion, the glass cleaning lockdown, seven foot three, max wingspan, max weight, nothing but defense and finishing, and it just doesn't provide much to the team, in my opinion. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoy the video. If you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the notice, all that good stuff. Feel free to leave some feedback too, tell me what your most overrated build is in 2K20. But anyway, moving along number two spot on my list. We have the playmaking sharpshooter with minimal defense at six foot two. Obviously, the speed pie chart is the way to go that you're looking at right here. I wouldn't recommend to go anything otherwise, but this is where a lot of people go wrong with this build they make it six foot two or even six foot one is becoming something that a lot of people like i don't know why like it's so it's so flawed and such a liability when it comes to defense and you see a lot of people like to go all out on the finishing too literally just for the badge spread now don't be wrong the badges look really nice 10 22 23 and one but again a lot of people go really minimal on that defense i would suggest if you were going to make this build to go six foot five a lot less finishing a lot more defense so that you're not so much a liability and y'all know the way that this game works nowadays is it's so built on iso with the playmaking defenders or some sort of slashing build at the one and again a lot of people like to make the six foot one i don't understand it but i i guess i sort of see like the reasoning with it if you were already going to commit to the six two life so in conclusion my final thoughts on this build as you get a look at the final attributes here as you can see, it's just a complete defensive liability, 28 block, 29 defensive rebound, 32 interior defense. It's just, and with one defensive badge on top of all that, again, you belong nowhere near the 2v2 court. On threes, you can get an easy bucket on you from just a corner cut if that's where you're trying to, you know, hide your player and, and have that be where you defend. Again, you can see I'm just going to show what it looks like at six foot one on top of that. And I don't really see any reason to do it, but we're just going to go ahead and just show you what it looks like. So anyway, again, I would just suggest go less finishing more defense be taller with this build if you were going to make it and as you can see the offensive threat obviously because it has <laughs> it's definitely not a defensive threat <laughs> so anyway moving along to number three we have the tall rim sharp so i believe this build at six foot nine or even six foot ten is really good maybe even six foot eleven you can get away with i just don't understand why anybody would ever make this build like seven foot or taller you just become like as as anything with a defender i don't really see why you would make it seven feet or taller and on top of that to go with the strength pie chart too now i will say going with this with the strength pie chart does allow you to actually be somewhat of an offensive threat when it comes to you know say you're playing against that number two build that i was showing you with the with the play sharp obviously you stand a good chance of backing him down and being able to get an easy bucket in that situation now the tough thing about this build too is you have to upgrade offensive rebound to get six badge points and the reason I say that's so tough is because you as a rim sharp are there for good spacing to play with a, maybe a slashing build where you're there for, like I said, you're going to be in the corner a lot on the wing where offensive rebounding is not a big part of your game. And it's just lost attribute points, in my opinion, that could go into something really good like finishing in this situation. But anyway, you're going to see I tweak the attributes just a little bit lower perimeter defense to where you can actually... And I don't know, I don't really suggest to do this because I do feel like perimeter D is also sort of important, but when it's at the, you know, when it's at the expense of a couple badge points with finishing and close shot rating, it's pretty important because when you go against builds like that number two one, like I was showing with the minimal defense 6-2 when they try to hide him in the corner, 
when you can go ahead and just back him down like that, it's going to at least provide you a little bit of offense and upgrading your, you know, choosing the strength pie chart, I guess, does make sense in that situation. But again, to go tall with this build, I just don't really see the reasoning behind it. And some people do some real stupid stuff and choose glass cleaner takeover. And the reason I suggest not to do that is the exact same reason I was talking about where like, like I said, you're not going to be around the hoop very often on offense, so I would just suggest if you do make this build to go rim takeover. But again, don't think that I mean that this build at center is bad because you do get really good defensive badge like amount. If you make this a rebounding wing with a small forward, you definitely don't get as high of max defensive badge ability. If you do go with a small forward, it makes it so you don't really have to do offensive rebounding because you don't really care to like max out your defensive badge points anyway. So again, to, as far as that build goes, I would just suggest go 6'9", 6'10"-ish. If you want to really go 6'11", I suppose, but I'm just here to tell y'all, defensive mobility is pretty important when it comes to, to big man defense. But anyway, coming in the number four spot, we have the BP build with no defense as well. So again, a lot of people like to make this max out its playmaking, shooting, and, and finishing, but go really minimal on the defense. Again, if you're a point guard doing this and you go like, you know, pretty short on your height and stuff like that too, I just feel like you're at a loss when it comes to that. So Anyway, obviously you're gonna see, we're not gonna upgrade into your defense. It's gonna be all perimeter D and lateral quickness. So we're gonna just plug those in right there. You get one extra attribute point left over. Now you can shave off a couple points here. The shooting, you can't do anything on. That has to stay max. And then the finishing, you don't really get that many badge or attribute points off. But anyway, again, I just don't recommend to go with a guard even if you're going 6'4 with this, because I feel like that's what a lot of people do. If you want to go shorter, I guess at this point, it doesn't really make my, that much of a difference. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be lacking, you know, you already got 30, 30 block rating at 6'4 anyway, or even 6'5. And again, it just doesn't make sense to go with something like this, in my opinion. But to, to each their own, I suppose if you want to be like a true offensive demon, this build is, is a problem to deal with. I mean, you're really fast. You got crazy contact dunk ability and you can shoot from super far away at a really reliable rate too so it's a great offensive build i just don't suggest to make it like this just because like i said it's not the best idea to lack all defense it definitely limits you to what courts you can play on too because i do feel like literally you're just restricted to only playing 3v3 in that situation even in pro-am you're just lost i mean you literally can't defend anybody when it comes to that unless it's on the perimeter and obviously on the perimeter you want lockdown defenders to be on ball rather than your one badge like no defensive rating self <laughs> so i mean y'all get the deal of what i'm saying here but anyway moving along number five build we have the pure playmaker now this one i want you to understand is actually a very good build now i just want to explain i do think a lot of people gas it up a little bit calling it the best point guard build in the game i don't really believe in that i'm not saying i'm not saying everybody says that but i saw a lot of people when i was ranking my point guard uh pie charts and tiers and everybody was saying like pure playmaker should be s tier like th that build is insane like I, I don't know i'm not with that i do still agree that it's a very good build and if you build it properly it can be it can be a really good one on top of that but anyway we're here to show you what most people do just in general they upgrade only defensive rebound because it gets their deep you know defensive badge points up so it's gonna be that around 27 playmaking maybe a little bit less but i feel like to do any less is just a loss because you're dropping like 10 attribute points just to maybe get back like say you lower your pass accuracy you're dropping like 10 attribute points just to lose like literally six or seven badges it doesn't make any sense to do so i just suggest to stay at the at the 27 playmaking badges no matter what and this is the tough thing on top of that with this build as well is figuring out what to do with your wingspan is a real struggle now i'm gonna go through a second time on this build and show you how i would like to make this i was even debating making this build for my point guard build because it does fit my style a little bit too but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and show you and again just because i say a build isn't like the best doesn't mean that i don't think it's still good like i said this would fit my play style really well i think I would really enjoy something like this if i were to make a guard build it's between this and the two-way slash play where you know you have like crazy just that two-way slash play is not even <laughs> it's not even comparable in any sense but anyway i'm going through a second time and showing y'all how i would pr approach this build myself so again i would still suggest to go with the speed and vert pie chart i wouldn't do anything different than that you still if you go pure speed you just had a loss with that unless you go taller on your height again i would still suggest 27 playmaking badges but what i would say to do differently is to not upgrade shooting all the way so you're gonna see what i'm gonna go ahead and do is lower post fade down and you have 11 shooting badges now this is where that sacrifice of the four shoot of the four shooting badges and post fade because I, I could care less about post fade i'm sure a lot of y'all could too but you know 
It's just obviously that's what you do for the badge points. Now, because you did that, you can upgrade things like blocking into your D. And now at six foot five, you actually stand a good chance whether it's you know defending ISO or if you have to switch on to like say a rim sharp who's just sitting corner and you're trying to you know allow your lockdown that you're playing with if he's at a good height as far as mobility goes too. If you want him to switch on to the ball handler, boom. This build can still guard the corner pretty decently with 11 defensive badges and at 80 defensive rebound, 69 block, and 55 interior D. That's that's pretty solid. Now, I am going to lower the weight here so the interior D does, does go down a little bit. And the only reason I do that is for lateral quickness and vertical. Obviously, the acceleration you don't need any any more of because, like I said, with hitting 99 and the, and the physical boost you get for the Gatorade stuff, obviously, it's going to help out. But this is what I'm going to suggest to do. If I were making this build, I'm going max wingspan. Again, I feel like th what I've seen from the two-way slashing playmakers as far as how easy they can shoot in the right situation, and this build gets 72 three-pointer. Now, don't be wrong, the, the amount of stuff that I drop down, it's almost to the point where why would you even make this build instead of the two-way slash play? And the truth is, if you want the max wingspan, you, it's really tough with that two-way slash play because this build with max wingspan still has 72 three-pointer. The two-way slashing playmaker probably has around 64 three-pointer out the box if you max your wingspan. And at the end of the day, a lockdown build with minimum wingspan is not a lockdown build. That's just a fact of the matter. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. Leave playmaker in the comments to show your support if you made it to the very end of the vid, just to show that you made it all the way through. But anyway. Other than that, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed. If we get this to like 500 likes in the first 24 hours, I'd really appreciate that. I don't really know what to judge my uh, like, my likes per views and stuff like that lately anymore. So we're just going to like aim it around 500. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And other than that, take it easy, man. Peace.